In the interest of preparing people for the new Mission Impossible, I'm going to recap the stylistic origins of every entry so you understand how Dead Reckoning is a culmination of all of them. So the first Mission Impossible was in 1996, and it was a fairly conventional Cold War-like spy drama, and it was a reboot of a TV show from the 60s, where the standby of the TV show was that spies would use rubber masks to disguise themselves as other people. And often in an episode there would be a twist that maybe someone was actually someone in a mask, and what you thought was happening was not what was happening the whole time. The series always featured a small team of specialists working for the Impossible Mission Force, carrying out some mission of, of deception, and it also featured a character called Eugene Kittridge, who was Ethan Hunt's superior, who at first seemed like a good guy, but then very much looked suspicious and like maybe the bad guy, but then turned out to maybe be a good guy. Dead Reckoning marks the first time he's ever returned to the franchise since the first one. And Ethan Hunt didn't do much action. He ran around a bit, and the finale had a big action set piece, but nothing practical, nothing near the level of spectacle we're used to. The film proved popular, though, and then received the sequel in 2002, and directorship was handed over to John Woo, a famous auteur known for his use of slow motion, doves, shooting two guns at once, and overall dramatized operatic action. And with not a bunch of ideas about how to continue the story, they just let him do his thing. So what emerged was a fairly generic and middling story, that nonetheless featured some more heightened action, chases, and stuff like that, raising the series' action quotient. Then, a sequel was made in 2008 and directed by J.J. Abrams, who proceeded to put his signature flair on it. So, a number of fairly good set pieces, a compelling emotional hook in the very start, and some fairly good character work. So, it was a success and the franchise continued. But then the fourth one came out and everything changed because it was directed by bum 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 Brad Bird, who directed The Incredibles, amongst other greats. And he brought everything he had learned at Pixar in terms of making blockbuster popular worldwide success movies to the franchise, and it exploded it into a new level of popularity. In terms of the action, in terms of the stunts, in terms of the suspense, in terms of the locations, in terms of the visuals, in terms of the character work. It elevated the whole thing to a, a blockbuster, worldwide success level. And it was. It truly was extremely successful and has brought about the current era that we're in. Two. Then, the fifth one it came out in 2015. And it was directed by Christopher McQuarrie. Christopher McQuarrie was a writer and director. And he met Tom Cruise working as a writer on Cruise's 2014 film, Edge of Tomorrow. And they had such a successful collaboration on that film that Tom Cruise asked Christopher McQuarrie to come direct the new Mission Impossible, and he did. And it was also really good. It took the best elements of the Brad Bird film and married it with a slightly more military warfare tone and excellent storytelling fundamentals and very creative set pieces. The central relationship was about Ethan Hunt's relationship with possible double agent Ilsa Faust, who was a kind of female Ethan Hunt. And while the film at first made it ambiguous whether she was a good guy or not, she ended up on the side of good, although not always legally. And she and Ethan Hunt came away with a very close, emotionally intimate relationship, although they did not get explicitly romantic. Christopher McQuarrie proved to be so successful that they kept him on, on as director, and that has birthed the current era. We might be able to see Dead Reckoning as the third in a trilogy. Mission Impossible Fallout came out in 2018 and was about stopping a mysterious groups of terrorists. And it was also a rousing success that managed to combine all the elements of the last film and build upon them. Ilsa Faust returned, and she and Ethan made their romantic connection a little more explicit and intentional. Which brings us to Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning, where Ethan Hunt seems to be facing off against an old enemy named Gabriel and searching for something that's shaped like a cross that's small enough to be maybe a computer chip or key. And the dramatic tension now seems to be about Hunt's relationship with Ilsa, who seems to be in danger. So the question is, what will happen to Ethan? What will happen to Ilsa? And what are the bad guys planning? 